I never imagined I'd be here, open to sharing my wounds, willing to give voice to the silenced and insight to those who have not been a part of the criminal justice system. But I'm here because there are biases that hold good people back from being strong leaders. And I believe awareness can shift that. Understanding is the start. 16 years ago, I experienced recidivism. Recidivism is when a convicted felon reoffends. But I'm here now, a vocation supervisor at a correctional institution, one that I was incarcerated in several years ago, a man with over a decade of experience as a licensed reentry crisis counselor and mentor, a man who holds an MBA. How did I get here? Awareness. A tool that can lead even the most mentally, emotionally, and spiritually in prison to freedom. The most important message I need for you to understand today is that successful reentry includes three pillars of support. The first is ex-offender awareness. The second is family awareness. And the third is community awareness. After I was released from my first felony conviction, my lack of awareness led me to difficulties expressing my emotions, handling my internal anxieties, and communicating with others. I was not aware that I would recall the details of the traumatic events that happened in lockdown environments. I was unaware that I would not unsee some of the tragic fights which led some people into being carried out in gurneys, or unhear the cringing sounds of metal coming from the cells, or forget the unjust treatment amongst inmates and staff that I kept suppressed in such a deep place that watching some movies would trigger me. As a result, insomnia controlled many nights, and I found myself in the daytime looking over my shoulders, expecting negative interactions. That became my new norm. I had no idea how to address the issues that were pursuing me. That led me right back into a cell as a second time offender. During my second release from my second felony incarceration, my desire for connection with others forced me to get professional help that revealed how to address those internal issues. In other words, I finally engaged with the first pillar of support, developing my awareness as an ex-offender. I became aware of the important roles that others played in reentry, aware of how to grow as an ex-offender, and aware that I need people that I cannot engage in reentry alone. This leads directly to the second pillar of support, developing awareness within families to support the ex-offender. For example, I was not prepared for the intense moments of awkwardness when communicating with my children and loved ones. Lack of family awareness played a harsh role in our relationships. Due to no fault of their own, they were not consciously aware of the amount of shame and guilt that I carried. They did not know how to perceive me. And because I didn't disclose those feelings, my relationships with my parents and my siblings, and especially my daughters, went to shambles. I didn't share this with any of my family members. I had returned home with tainted emotions, and I had become numb to other people's feelings, including my own. My efforts to smile and interact with my daughters, who were toddlers at the time, were ineffective. I tried to act as if I hadn't missed any birthdays, holidays, or hospital visits, but they knew I had. My overall mood became somber, and my little girls knew I was not their same daddy but they didn't have a clue on how to respond. I tried to express myself through fake smiles and forced I love yous, but the hard truth is I had fallen out of love with myself and who I became, a two-time felon, and I hungered for enough family support that I could love myself again. My family's lack of awareness made it difficult for them to connect with my emotional needs. How did my family go from beyond that to supporting me? They began to see me reach out to get professional help. They saw me getting emotional help and mental health support. They saw me work hard towards workforce development and they began to ask questions. We opened dialogue. The first and second pillar of support, ex-offender and family awareness are intertwined and become a win-win for both the ex-offender and the family members. With our lines of communications open, we begin collaborating in other areas of needs. 71% of former prisoners 
cite family as the most important factor in helping them from going back from, to prison. Earlier I had mentioned the preconceived notions that are holding good people back, maybe even some of you, from being strong leaders in support of ex-offenders. The third pillar of support, developing community awareness of ex-offenders experiences, can help you empower an ex-offender's ability to engage and utilize their gifts within the community. Ex-offenders want to be seen and to have an opportunity to prove that we have the ability to be productive and pro-social members of society. In my experience, lack of employer awareness was one of the most exhausting and challenging for re-entering the community, primarily due to the misconceptions and stereotypes. For example, prior to my incarcerations, I had a strong, promising work history. I had worked at General Motors. I had a few office jobs. I even was promoted to a coordinator position at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in the Services Division. But having an opportunity to shine like that in positions like those felt impossible after incarcerations. Like many others, I found myself trembling at the very thought of answering and responding criminal background questions during interviews. And beyond my college experience and my acquired supervisory skills and business etiquette, being an ex-offender did something to my self-esteem that I cannot explain. It has been said that we live in a culture of forgiveness, redemption, and self-transformation. <laughs> well, I had applied to 253 jobs only to get five responses. We glamorize certain ex-offender terms using labels such as returning citizens, formerly incarcerated persons, or re-entering citizens. But companies and organizations are still skeptical without a certain level of awareness of the rehabilitative phase of reentry. As a community member, you need to also be aware of the collateral consequences that oppress ex-offenders upon release. Even now, Myself and others with criminal backgrounds are still challenged by limitations on certain rights under the law. Some of those rights include housing, international travel, professional licensing, serving some areas in the military, financial aid, and even receiving government benefits. Could you imagine how having your rights stripped from you would affect your ability to engage in your community? This is why it's important for the community to understand and be educated about these and other reentry challenges. Community awareness allows ex-offenders to collaborate more with society. When I feel that the community has my back, it gives me the ability to feel more enhanced and innovative and structured. If it doesn't happen, we are more adversaries than allies. Communities have to be accountable for being advocates for ex-offender success not working against it. Yes, there are those ex-offenders who receive three pillars of support with family, friends, and community organizations, and yet they still recidivate. There may be a weak link in that individual's pillars of support. It takes strong, consistent integration of all three pillars of awareness to improve the success of an ex-offender. Integration that keeps us looking in the same direction regarding holistic ex-offender engagement and inclusion. It is possible for ex-offenders to engage successfully in re-entry through open and honest awareness, self-awareness, and for family to maintain awareness through open dialogues, and for communities to provide more ways to understand the hidden challenges that come with felony stigmas. As for me, my plans are to continue using my voice, turning my fears into freedom, and using the three pillars of awareness to transform those wounds of recidivism into three strong pillars of support.